Well, brothers and sisters, this morning we are going to look at two different writings from the Apostle John. Uh, this is the Apostle uh, John who was, uh, as far as we can tell, uh, definitely who was exiled to the island of Patmos uh, because of his preaching of Jesus Christ, uh, but also the John who writes the Gospel of John and uh, refers to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Uh, we've talked about that before and, and it could sound like it's a little bit arrogant, but really uh, what it is, uh, as far as I can tell, is uh, an ex exclamation of astonishment, a constant and perpetual awe that God in Jesus Christ loved him. <laughs> I'm the disciple who Jesus loved. Wow, that's amazing. Anyways, it's that apostle, the apostle John, who wrote both the letter, 1 John, um, and who wrote the gospel of John, as far as we know. And so we are going to read first from the gospel of John, wherein uh, Jesus' words are recorded by John. And then we are going to read from 1 John, uh, the letter, 1 John chapter 5. And so here is John chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. John 15, verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Indeed, instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my commandment. Love each other. And then moving on to 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. 1 John 5, 1 to 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are, are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, brothers and sisters, these passages really unpack the core of, of who we were meant to be, of who God is, of what we were meant to do, of what love means. Uh, it, it is so essential, and it unpacks so many things for us. You see, the, 
There's an artist I love. You maybe heard of me uh, speaking of him before, uh, probably. Uh, Steve Bell is his name. He's a he's a Canadian artist. He's a, a Christian, a Christ follower, and uh, he has this. One of my favorite songs is all about love. It's all about love, and it's true. There are people, theologians and so on and so forth, who will say that really there is sometimes an overemphasis on love in our theology, in our practice, and so on. And we're going to unpack that a little bit. But basically, if love is understood properly, from a biblical perspective, then there can be no overemphasis of love. There can be no overemphasis of love. In other words, you can emphasize love till the cows come home and it will be entirely appropriate and proper. Now, I believe what these theologians and pastors and so on are getting at when they talk about an overemphasis on love is that they are worried that somehow love stands in contrast for some people with God's righteousness and holiness, God's commands, God's, uh, God's insistence that we must do what is good. It, it it comes in some people's minds close to the idea of cheap grace. Cheap grace is the kind of grace that says, oh, well, I know God's going to forgive me anyway, so I'll just do whatever I want. Or the kind of grace that that we accept taking for granted, that we just, we just don't realize or we're not aware of or we shove to the background just how significant God's grace is. See, the reality of grace, too, is that if we properly understand the grace that has been given to us, if we really understood it, it would drive us to our knees crying out to God, Lord, I am so unworthy. Thank you. Oh, I can barely live under the awesomeness of this grace. So too it is with love. Love is not, and Jesus and John, the apostle, make it very clear here, love in the, in, in the sense that God is love. Love is not something cheap. It's not something easy. It doesn't let us get away with whatever we want. It does not leave us alone, and it certainly doesn't become a carpet to be walked upon whenever we want. Love is something intense and powerful and strong and holy and righteous. Love is awesome, full of awe. Listen to what Jesus says. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. See, you, you can't separate keeping God's commands from love. You can't separate keeping God's commands from love. It would be like the, the spouse who, who says, hey, can you stop leaving the cap off of the, toothbrush, the toothpaste? Can you stop doing that? If, it has been something we've been dealing with for years, and it's driving me nuts. And... If you love me, please put the cap back on the toothpaste. 
at some point, leaving the cap off the toothpaste flies in the face of love. Now, of course, that's a tiny example, an example that is almost insignificant, but that doesn't mean that it's not true. And of course, the things that God is talking about are far more significant than that, right? Because God taught us, God created us, excuse me, to be perfect. As we talked about during communion, God created us to be in perfect, loving relationship with him and with each other and to care for this world. And if we don't do those things perfectly, both with our hands and our feet and our hearts and our minds, if we're not doing those things wholeheartedly, perfectly, then it is not good enough. But the beauty of love is that in Jesus Christ, love reaches down to us in our dirt and, and mire and muck and filth and lifts us up so that we can become something other than simply servants who have to do what God calls us to do, even though we are not perfect. You see, this is amazing, right? Jesus goes on and says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that a, that a person should lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. So Jesus pulls us up out of muck and mire, out of rebellion against God. Jesus pulls us up out of that filth and makes us friends with him so that we have an insight, a knowledge of what God's plans are, what God is doing in this world, and we have a role to play. And so love is something huge. Love encompasses everything from treating our neighbors justly to buying groceries at the store. Love involves sometimes being strong and saying no, no further. And sometimes it involves saying, I forgive you. And often it involves both. I forgive you and you may not do this again. Love is strong. Love is not cheap grace. Love requires us to live out God's commands. But the interesting thing is that just as John says, in chapter 5 of 1 John, he says, And God's commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. You see, this is the huge contrast between the Old Covenant and the New. In the Old Covenant, people thought that they needed to do everything like a servant perfectly, and if they did it perfectly, if they obeyed those commandments perfectly, then they could somehow, uh, with the sacrifices that were involved too, they could somehow come to heaven. But that was, that was a mug's game. That was a fool's game. Jesus, God allowed that to exist so that we would get it through our heads ultimately, that that stuff is ineffective, that we cannot behave our way into God's good graces, that we cannot, no sacrifice by animals is going to be good enough. 
And instead, we learn that something has to transform us. Transform us so that keeping the commandments is no longer a burden, but instead it is a joy. It is part of our love. It is part of overcoming this world. That's why John says, this is the victory that has oven, overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes in Jesus that he is the son of God. And believing doesn't mean this, right? It means this. It means doing and thinking and feeling and walking. And so, brothers and sisters, what does this mean for us? Well, it means that if we love God, it needs to show, right? Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Brothers and sisters, it needs to show that we love God, just as it needs to show that we love our spouse, maybe by putting the toothpaste cap back on. It needs to show that we love God in how we act. It needs to bear fruit. And what does that look like? Well, that gets more challenging, right? Because Jesus himself in his walking and in his talking on this earth says it's no simple task of following, blindly following rules. This is one of the key criticisms that he has for the Pharisees is that they're so concerned about following the rules that they expand the rules upon rules upon rules and they miss the point of the law. And Jesus says to us what the point of the law is. The point of the law is to love God and to love our neighbor. Love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength and love our neighbor. And that's why the Sabbath, when Jesus' disciples are going through the fields and gleaning some grain and eating it, or, or when Jesus heals people on the Sabbath, or when Jesus does stuff on the Sabbath, and he says to, he says to the Pharisees and to his disciples, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, right? He's saying blind obedience to the rules misses the point. Yes, keep the Sabbath. But what that looks like needs to be figured out, discerned by the Spirit of God and the community of God in, in conjunction, in community and in accountability and in love and figure it out. How are you going to honor God? Paul talks about how some people will honor God you know, one day over another, and other people will honor God just the same all, all the days of the week, and that does, that's fine. As long as they do it to God, it's good. No blind obedience to the rules. Instead, the rules understood through Scripture and wisdom and the power of the Holy Spirit, and in connection with the community. In short, love. Love for God and love for people. This is true, of course, in more than just the Sabbath. This is also true in how we relate to others. How we relate to people who don't believe the same things as, as I how we relate to people who look different, how we relate to people we see on the street, how we relate to our neighbors, how we relate to the people we do business with. Brothers and sisters, we need to exercise love in all that we do. But it is not a burden. It is a joy.
So I pray that you will, that I will, that we will this week walk in joyful obedience to Christ's commands in all of our interactions, if in ourselves, through the power of the Spirit. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this passage. Thank you for these passages. Thank you for the Apostle John and the inspiration that you gave him through the Spirit. Excuse me. Lord, we pray that you will guide us and keep us. That you will show us your way of love in each and every situation. Father, guide us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.